Hello, boys and girls. I'm your Peter Pan storyteller. This is the story of the last starfighter. This is the story of gremlins. This is the story of Tron. This is the story of Raiders of the Lost Ark. This is the story of the Empire Strikes Back. You can read along with me in your book. You can follow the story along with me. Every time you hear this sound. Every time you hear this sound. Turn the pages when you hear this sound. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear the computer sound like this. Let's, let's begin, let's begin now. Hello, pop culture geeks. Welcome to the latest episode of When You Hear This Sound, brought to you by the Space Monkey X Audio Workshop. This is your host, Rob Lamley. 1979's The Black Hole from Walt Disney seems like it was a film made to capitalize on the unexpected success of 1977's Star Wars. However, the film was in process long before that, reaching back to the early 70s, when disaster films like The Poseidon Adventure and The Towering Inferno were all the rage. Writers Bob Barbash and Richard Landau approached Disney Studios to make a similar disaster movie, but in space, originally titled Space Station One. As happens with a lot of film projects, the script was written and rewritten, concept art was created, preliminary special effects models were made, but the film languished on the shelf until 1978, when Gary Nelson, the director of Disney's successful 1976 film Freaky Friday, signed on. By then, the film had taken on a new name, The Black Hole, and had changed from a disaster movie into something more akin to The Island of Dr. Moreau. The USS Palomino, on its return trip to Earth after exploring deep space, happens upon the wreck of the USS Cygnus, a ship thought to have been lost decades before, teetering on the edge of a black hole's gravity field. On board the Cygnus, Dr. Hans Reinhardt is the sole human survivor, having replaced all of the long-dead crew with robots, including the security robot, Maximilian. Disney clearly thought the black hole was going to be as big as Star Wars. They blitzed the market with black hole merchandise, mainly focusing on the robot personalities like Maximilian and the comic relief bots Vincent and Bob. Everything from coloring books to board games, to Viewmaster reels to t-shirts, to action figures to trading cards, and plenty more, were released in an effort to drum up excitement. And they needed that excitement to translate to box office dollars. Between production costs, marketing, and merchandising, Disney sunk $26 million into the film, making it their most expensive movie to date. But even with a solid cast of 1970s mainstay actors like Anthony Perkins, Robert Forster, Roddy McDowell, Ernest Borgnine, and Slim Pickens, as well as some truly groundbreaking special effects, most critics said it was a boring film and audiences stayed away. The movie wound up making only $35 million at the domestic box office. Today I bring you one of those pieces of black hole merchandise, the read-along record book, released in 1979 by Disneyland Records. That same year, the story of the black hole was also released by Disneyland Records, an album that includes the original dialogue, music, and sound effects from the film, as well as a 12-page color booklet with promotional shots from the movie. I've opted to go with the shorter of the two today, simply because it's the most digestible. The other record is about 40 minutes long, and, well, remember when I mentioned that critics said it was a boring movie? If you head over to spacemonkeyx.net, I've uploaded the entire read-along book as a PDF, but I've also included photos from the longer record if you want to check them out too. And with that, let's get to 1979's Black Hole, released by Disneyland Records. Enjoy. This is the story of the Black Hole. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear the chimes ring like this. Let's begin now. The explorer ship USS Palomino was speeding home toward Earth. Her weary crew had spent many months in space, searching for planets where humans could live. Although their mission was over, their greatest adventure was about to begin. As the crew went about its duties, the image of a gigantic black whirlpool began to form on the scanner screen. Dr. Kate McRae watched in amazement. What incredible power. It's swallowing comets, planets, even stars. A black hole, exclaimed Vincent, the ship's robot. The deadliest force in the universe. Nothing can escape it. Charlie, the youngest crew member, 
had another surprise. Captain Holland, there's a ship sitting motionless on the edge of the black hole. It's not being sucked in. According to the computer, it's the USS Cygnus. But that's impossible. The Cygnus disappeared 20 years ago. And how could any ship defy the force of a black hole? All right, crew, let's go down and have a look. Ordered the captain. Charlie, prepare to dock with the Cygnus. As the Palomino found the docking platform and gently landed, Kate looked out the viewport. I thought I saw something move. There are people on board. The airlock opened, and the captain cautiously led his crew aboard the mysterious ship. Don't take any chances. We don't know who or what to expect. I quite agree, Captain. Added Vincent. Better safe than sorry. The captain led the way as they explored the vast, empty hallways. No signs of life anywhere. Let's try the control tower. I want to see who's running this ship. An elevator whisked them to the top level. The door opened to reveal a tremendous room full of computers. Kate looked around. Something's not right. There's no one here but robots. I don't much like the company of robots myself, sniffed Vincent. Just then, the crew looked up to see a red mechanical monster hovering above them. His sight panel glowed angrily as he advanced toward them. Vincent moved to protect his friends. The dangerous red robot drew closer. A voice boomed from the shadows. Maximilian, stop. There is no way to welcome guests. A bearded man stepped into the light. I am Dr. Reinhardt, captain of the Cygnus. It's nice to have visitors after being alone for so long. Alone? Asked Charlie. What about your crew? They left in emergency shuttles when the Cygnus was disabled by a meteor storm. I remained on board, developed this robot crew, and continued my research on the black hole. But how do you keep from being pulled into the deadly whirlpool? Asked the captain. I developed anti-gravity forces to hold my position. We are perfectly safe. Come, let me show you around. Exploring on his own, Vincent met a battered robot named Old Bob, who whispered an urgent warning. Reinhardt lied about his crew. They're still here running the ship. He turned them into robots, and the same could happen to your friends. Come on, shouted Vincent. We must warn them. After hearing Old Bob's story, Kate was shocked. Why would Reinhardt do such a thing? He's obsessed with the idea of going into the black hole. When the crew wanted to go home, he electronically took control of their minds in his laboratory. We've got to get out of here, warned the captain. From the control tower, Dr. Reinhardt had secretly monitored old Bob's conversation. He watched angrily as the Palomino crew dashed back toward their ship. They've discovered my secret. Makes million. I want them stopped. Send out your sentry robots. The fierce sentries had quickly blocked off all passages leading to the Palomino. The crew was trapped. Vincent turned to Captain Holland. Surely a huge ship like the Cygnus would have some sort of escape craft. Of course. Vincent, you're a genius. Old Bob cut in. There's a small probe ship nearby. We'll cut through the garden. The crew followed old Bob into Dr. Reinhardt's huge indoor garden. As they crept silently through the dense maze of plants, Kate breathed a sigh of relief. We've lost them. I don't think so, Kate, shouted the captain as laser blasts crackled overhead. He turned and fired at the oncoming sentries. Come on, crew, let's get out of here. Alarms sounded and dozens of sentry robots appeared. There was no place for the crew to hide. They've got us surrounded shouted Charlie. The captain drew his laser pistol. Well, if they want to fight, we'll give them one. Laser guns fired. Deadly streaks of light crisscrossed in the passageways. The 
This is the first fighting I've done in 20 years, shouted old Bob. I feel like a kid again. The robots proved no match. One by one, they were destroyed in a blaze of sparks. Charlie viewed the smoldering sentries. Reinhardt's got plenty more of these, and we can't fight them all. Let's take the air car, replied old Bob. It runs through a tunnel along the side of the Cygnus. The sentries won't be able to reach us. The crew dashed aboard the air car and sped away toward the probe ship. Suddenly, large, fiery rocks rained down on the Cygnus. A meteor storm, shouted the captain. He stopped the air car as a meteor ripped through the tunnel ahead of them. Come on, we'll have to continue on foot. Something else, Captain, added Vincent. The meteors have damaged the anti-gravity field. The Cygnus is beginning to drift into the black hole. Old Bob led the crew to a bridge over an enormous storage room. We're almost to the probe ship now. Look out! Screamed Kate. Another meteor! A gigantic ball of flame came crashing through the room right at them. They raced away as the meteor smashed the bridge where they had been only seconds before. Approaching the door to the probe ship, the crew found their way blocked by Maximilian. His poised laser guns fired. Old Bob's been hit! Shouted Kate. Vincent looked at his friend lying wounded on the floor. Captain, run for the probe. I'll handle Maximilian. Vincent rushed at the red giant and pinned him to the wall as the crew ran safely by. Maximilian caught the brave little robot in a crushing grip, but Vincent only sneered. It's time I put you in your place. One of Vincent's panels opened and a whirling drill appeared. It tore into Maximilian's control panel. Sparks flew, and the red robot toppled over. <laughs> Vincent had won. Vincent raced to old Bob's side. Come on, there's not much time. The Cygnus is already starting to break up. No, Vincent, this is my home. I belong here. You go ahead and watch after your friends. I'll never forget you, said Vincent sadly. Goodbye. He boarded the probe ship just as it blasted free from the Cygnus. The crew watched as the crippled Cygnus was sucked into the black hole and crushed like an eggshell. Captain shook his head. That looks like our fate too. This probe is programmed to go through the black hole. Gripped by the immense gravity, the probe ship fell faster and faster into the huge whirlpool. Suddenly, everything was calm. They had come through safely. Before them stretched a giant universe filled with planets and stars that had been swallowed by the black hole. Kate was stunned. What will we do now? Well, we can't go back, replied the captain. But that's no reason to give up hope. We've been trained to find new worlds. Let's go find one for ourselves. Thanks for stopping by the show today. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. You can head over to spacemonkeyx.net for pictures, links, and additional information about this episode, and check out some of the other podcasts presented by the Space Monkey X Audio Workshop. This has been your host, Rob Lamley. Thanks for listening to When You Hear This Sound, the podcast dedicated to the weird and wonderful world of read-along record books and storybook vinyl. I'll see y'all next time.